uh, at least the last hour and a half, Mr. Nixon has carried the state of Illinois. He now has 287 electoral votes. I'm sure he will also carry Alaska. That his final total will be 290. I think in the final analysis that Mr. Humphrey will carry Maryland with its 10, but we won't know that perhaps until Thursday. But the ball game is over. Our congratulations to Vice President-elect, to President-elect Nixon. And we have a profile of his victory in Illinois, the state that decided it all. It was a finely shaded contest, but Nixon won it and won it by a very narrow margin. And again, thanks to the help of third party candidate George Wallace. Nixon has carried 67% of the rural vote. That's downstate. That's where the Republicans always cast their big vote. 51% of the suburban vote went for Nixon. 46% of the Catholic vote for Nixon. The average income voter, 50% of them were for Nixon. The urban voter, it says 51% for Nixon. Now, the Negro vote, though, reached a perhaps an all-time low for any Republican candidate, only 4%. Those of low income had 8%. Labor, as a whole, gave Nixon 37% of its vote. The Protestants gave him 50%, and he got 33% of the Jewish vote. And at the same time, we were also advised that Senator Dirksen has carried Illinois over Attorney General Clark, and so the majority leader returns back to Washington. He's a welcome figure there. He's we in the press corps there. We don't uh, we don't play party politics. We we like Ev Dirksen, and we're glad to have him back. This again, no reflection on uh, on Mr. Clark, who ran against him and gave him a tight race. But Ev is one of the delight. Ev Dirksen is one of the delightful people of Washington. And uh, you find him uh, on a very large number of bipartisan issues, standing four square with the administration, especially on foreign policy affairs. So, as far as I'm concerned, Howard, the big story is that uh, Nixon has won it. He's won it with, I guess, 290 electoral votes, where he credited him for sure with 287. He needed only 270 to win. The vice president has 193 now. It will perhaps go to 203 if he carries Maryland, as, we, as I expect. And Wallace stands with 45 and his five states. Wallace has failed in his gamble to force this contest into the House of Representatives where he could make his deal beforehand, or he could make his deal, as he said on Issues and Answers last Sunday, on a variety of subjects with the kind of people who thought like he did. In other words, somebody who would adopt his kind of platform, his kind of non-enforcement of civil rights laws, his kind of appointment of different kinds of Supreme Court justices than we now have. At the same time, we have a victory profile for, for, Nix, for Dirksen's victory. Dirksen carried 73% of the rural vote, 38% of the urban vote, and Dirksen got only 9% of the Negro vote. That's a surprise. Labor went 42% for Dirksen, and the Protestant vote was 57% for Dirksen. The low-income voter, Dirksen, got only 10%. The Catholic vote, he got 52%. And suburban Illinoisans voted 59% for the, major for the minority leader, Everett McKinley Dirksen, who will be back in Washington for another six-year term. So, Howard, it's been a long, long night but at long last, we have a conclusion, and Richard Nixon is the president-elect of these United States. Howard? Nixon has, with uh, Illinois' uh, projection in his favor, 287 electoral votes. Presumably, he'll get the three from Alaska. It's doubtful he'll get the 10 from Maryland. Those are the only ones remaining, and that elects him president of the United States. In 1960, he, uh, he lost Illinois by a mere 8,000 votes and he felt that Illinois had cost him election in 1960. Now, in 1968, it is the same state which has given him the election uh, with 280, total of 287 electoral votes. At 8.15 Eastern Time, 
ABC's Decisions Desk announced the projection that Nixon, Nixon would win uh, Illinois and give him the necessary votes to go over the top in this presidential election, which, so far as we're concerned, is now settled. And that's the National Election 68 story at 25 minutes after the hour. No kidding. The election has just been decided, but here's how the popular vote looks with 88% of all the precincts reporting in. Nixon leads, not by a great deal, 28 million and 73,000 votes for Nixon, the Republican candidate. Hubert Humphrey, the Democratic candidate, second with 27,710,000 and George Wallace, third with almost 9 million votes. Now, in the percentage of the votes, let's have a look at that uh, board. So close, we can't make a distinction without a decimal point. 43% of the votes for each Nixon and Humphrey with Wallace, 14%. Wallace doing a little worse than the poll said he would. In the electoral vote, the one that counts, it takes 270 votes to become president. Nixon has 287, just uh, won them about 10 minutes ago. Humphrey second with 193, Wallace third with 45. Now, uh, Bill Lawrence, uh, this is, uh, there aren't many uh, precedents for a man coming back like this and winning the presidency after losing it and spending eight years in hibernation, are there? Well, indeed, Howard, in the history of the two-party system, no two-time candidate has, uh, two, uh, uh, a candidate who has lost once and been re-nominated has ever been elected to the presidency. This is, uh, you know, go, uh, William Jennings Bryan tried it three times, Never won. Uh, Adlai Stevenson tried it twice, didn't win. Thomas E. Dewey tried it twice, didn't win. Richard Nixon has tried it twice and won the second time. We speculate, and this is pure speculation, not a projection, that Humphrey leading in Maryland will get those 10 election votes, and that'll put him over 200. But uh, Nixon has 287, and that's how many it takes. So uh, then Alaska, presumably, will go to Nixon. That will give Nixon 290 to Humphreys 200. ABC's coverage of election 68 will continue after this message.